if you have really wonderful musical instruments, you can listen to them your entire lifetime and you never get bored. <laughs> So this is uh, one of the most beautiful organs in North America, built by John Brombaugh. So starting with the principle 16 of the great. Eight foot principle. Together with the sixteen. A 16 foot principle. I had not built a 16 principle prior to this and I thought because I really had some other ideas too. The organ was going to originally was going to sit over here right in the center of the, mm -hmm. of the church but it turns out that the structure of this this balcony here um, is made out of steel yeah. and it projects out from the back and there's was nothing that went down to the floor in the front. In the and so uh, when I found out that the structure under here was um, almost impossible to deal with and there was nothing here. This right here was the edge of the balcony. Yeah, it was kind of a half. Right, and so this over here was all for, had to be added on mm -hmm. uh, to that. And I thought, aha, you know, if we just move it over there, then we'll, we'll not end up with structural problems on how to hold the organ. So I could tell the church what they needed to do to add some beams under here in a certain way and it would be able to hold the organ. And so that problem immediately went away. Some principals have a beautiful tone but they're not relaxed. Yeah. The 16 foot is very relaxed. It speaks perfectly but it... it and what about this one? That's brighter. It's, it's beautiful too. Yeah, well, it's not, it's, yeah, yeah. yeah so it's, it's a little bit brighter in my opinion. Yeah. Well, it's uh, a little bit narrower scale. Mm -hmm. Because it's also a very interesting thing. Oh, in fact, I'm, I might be lying. It may not be. Because I actually, I did something related to one of my favorite Dutch organs. And that's the great organ in Alkmaar. Mm. And it's very interesting. I have not studied Alakmar by going through all the details myself. 
so I really don't know. But I have the scales that Mr. Flintrop gave me, uh, <coughs> and Dr. Venta also, um, for the Alkmaar organ. And they're all the same. That's very interesting. All the way from the lowest pitch to the highest pitch, uh, the, the octave eight foot middle C was identical with C above middle C for the 16 and blah, blah, blah. So all pipes that are the same, make the same pitch sound are the same. And I did that here. And that does not work for the ultimate putting together of the plenum in an organ that's sort of in the form of a Schmidtger organ. You have to make the octave uh, forefoot about two half tone pipes smaller. You have to do this all the way through, and that was not done on here. Now here the eight foot pressed on in the rook positive. Compare it with the octave A. the octave four. On the rook positive. no octave 2 on the rook positive so I'm going to add the quint in the There's a 6 to 10 rank mixture on the grade. With the prestant 16. Also did something else. This originally 
this is the mixture. Mm -hmm. And here's an oak gumbo. What a funny place to put that. Yeah. But the reason it's there is because that used to be the sharf. Mm -hmm. This was a mixture and a sharf. It's very interesting. If you study what Arp Schnitger did, I have a listing of uh, a good book from Gustav Falk that's a study of Arp Schnitger's work and came out in 74. He was Harald Fogel's teacher and Harald helped finish this book off. Well, it turns out there is nothing like a scharf in the Schnitger organ that's with the mixture that is part of the, the main keyboard, the great, or the hauptwerk, like that. And, and so the idea of having both of these stops doesn't work. And further, furthermore, it's probably ridiculous. It probably turns out that when the organs were originally built, that the mixture and the sharf were actually sets of pipes that were always played together. If you pulled on one, you pulled on the other. They were never made that you played games this or that or both. And so, uh, you know, this was built back when I was much younger. And so I decided I made a, a mistake in his understanding of the historic organ that doesn't work as well. So I changed it over and I could pull out the toe board that all the, had all the pipes and I completely changed it over and then I put this extra stop that I decided, hey, having a quiet stop in That's the That's a really nice stop I'm using it from yeah. my side of the yeah. uh, There is a sharp uh, on the rig positive. the Quintadena. So this organ doesn't exactly play all the organ repertoire, but it plays some really well. Well, that's an interesting problem, because it, and, and it's a really valid problem. And my feeling about this, from you know, because I built organs for about 43 years before, from the beginning to when I retired, and I, I don't mean during my apprenticeship period too, but uh, I think. Uh, you have to be very careful because no, no great artist or no great physicist or no great doctor ever does stuff by compromising this and that and the next thing because then you have something that does everything in a very yucky way. It doesn't do Poorly. anything yeah. correctly. And so you have to make up your mind. What are you going to do? And so um, I like, for example, I love the French organs from the important classical time. But the thing is that I realized that the majority of my projects are going to go to Protestant churches that are going to sing hymns. And if you're going to sing hymns with them, then the organ has to work just like the old organs in the Netherlands and, and North Germany. And if the organ's going to play the other music, okay, you'd have to see, okay, what can you do to compromise to handle that? But if you go on the compromising route 
too far, then you end up doing doing everything and doing this nothing well. This. So there's a posaune, 16 by itself, beautiful. Trumpet eight. Posana. Trumpet four. Too, but that's a solo stop mixture in the pedal. them together. This is interesting. The cornet. The cornet. You almost never see a Schnitger organ, for example. They'll have they'll have the Posada 16. Oh no, it's okay. Posada 16, very, very important. And a trumpet eight. And then a cornet. They don't have a forefoot. And that's very often in all the Neobaroque organs, from Marcus and down to now. It's so comical. That they have a 16 8 4. Yes. And the cornets never happened. This is the first cornet I ever made because I didn't build any. This is when I built it, this was the largest organ I'd made. And and I thought, oh, gotta put a cornet. I love that stop. This, this, I, I mean, I don't know if you like this sound. It's got a wonderful sound by itself, even if you want to, because there, there is music, I think. Uh, music from Samuel Scheidt that I've heard, where you really need to have a two foot in the pedal to play a melody against yes. what you do in the manual. Yeah. If you don't have the two foot there, you're you're stuck. And the nachthorn as well. It's just yeah, the yeah. Range. You can use it as a soprano and and an alto. Right. Because the four foot you can't really use it as a soprano. It's right. Only good for and an the alto. nachthorn when you make it right. Nachthorn too. Put an octave lower.
and then the coordinate 2. Uh, perhaps something fun, the Vox Humana uh, 8 with the Quint Spitzflöte, and there's a funny Ranket with the Oak Gedacht. is right here in front of the player. This is very good. If you look at this metal, that's the high, the high lead. lead. You can see it's very Alloy. dark. Uh -huh. kind of yeah. Almost blackish. Double yeah, and if you want to, and if you make a principal pipe out of um, of tin, that's fine. And you find tin, for example, Godfrey Zilberman's work yeah. is often high tin, and you also find it in the historic French organs. Uh, Rohrflöte on the great. And the with the Spitzflöte. on the rook positive. With the roar flute. just by itself. There's a C flat one and one and a third on the repositive. There's a sesquialtera with the uh, roar flute and gedacht. flute Let's try the quintadina by itself
how you fit all these pipes into this organ. It has a 16-foot quintadena in the root positive. Oh, that's, that's here. That's unbelievable. Like, oh, and I put I put, put the bottom notes of the quintadena. Right here? Right there, yes. Okay. I figured out how to do that. That's yeah. wonderful. And it's a metal quintadena. Oh, yeah. It has to be metal. All the way. Yeah. Yeah. Except bottom C sharp. Bottom C sharp. the subbass, I Yeah, guess. I combined it with the subbass. <laughs> That's great. With the presto. The roar flute by itself is beautiful. Spitzwörter. Ja, Oak Gamba. With the Rolf Spitzwörter. Vox Humana. Spitzwörter. Or with the octave. Trumpet with the octave four. it for the great and the rick positive. Now moving on to the Brustwerk. Um, Oak Gedacht. Flute uh, four. With the Oak Gedacht. Principal two. Trächter Regal.
Punk at 16 and get act. is a corny four rank from middle C. We haven't tried the TS on the grate with the quint, Spitzwürte and Rorschwürte. Another stop that, I mean, I learned certain things, and unfortunately, after a while, all of my organs sort of become this similar to each other, <laughs> because I love to have the octave eight foot, or excuse me, the the dulcian, oh, the dulcian, and I, some of my favorite stops are dulcians. Yeah. Oh, I pandered that dulcian after the dulcian in Der Akerk in Groningen. We haven't tried the Dulcian. Um, Dulcian with the Rorfurte. Continuing, there's one more stop on the Brusswerk, which I'm afraid to try. That symbol, three rank. I need ear plugs. Perhaps without the trash terregal, and instead use the oak gadak. about the runket. Exciting sound. Um, what is that? Oh. Vogel song.
No. John Booty worked with me. <laughs> that's, that's his work. What's the project? That's the symbol still. And turn it off. <laughs> 